All righty, friends and neighbors. Welcome to the Jetty Wolf Workshop, where today I am unboxing right now because the UPS man just handed it to me two seconds ago. A very simple new VHF radio for the boat. There's a long story behind why I'm putting on a new VHF radio on the Jetty Wolf. This is supposed to be small, standard horizon. I've had, I don't know how many standard horizon radios before. I'm not a big radio gabber. I mean, good God, sometimes you hear these guys out offshore and everything. They're talking about fried chicken and whatever. I mean, I don't even like listening to the radio. But I have to have it for safety purposes. Even though I barely go far enough offshore that it is even out of cell phone range. Oh, death cam! Death Oh, damn. No. Oh, damn. Woo. Navigator? Yes. Running the boat the whole time? Angler? Yes. Anglerette? Anglerette. Dave, cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you the history of why I'm even doing this. <laughs> I sold a Ray Marine modular radio system that I had put on my boat at the factory in 2006. When my boat was built, I went ahead and ordered it with complete Raymarine setup. I had all the modular systems. In the beginning, I had a 12 inch screen up on the dash. I mean 12 inch uh, display unit that was connected to the actual depth finder system that was under the dash. And it was a GPS, had a GPS antenna that had to be installed, and let's see, then I had the VHF radio. It was a modular system where the radio was up under the dash and had a separate hand handset, which was your mic and like a telephone speaker. You could hold it up and listen to it on a big microphone where all your buttons and everything were right on it. And it had a separate external speaker that was on the dash, which I'll show you in a little while. I'm telling you, I mean, number one, I'm not a Ray Marine fan because the 12 inch sounder went back, I don't know, multiple times because before, back then I didn't have a top on my boat. And of course, yeah, it would rain, it would get wet. So that eventually totally crapped out and I sold it for parts for like 50 bucks on eBay. And then I turned around and I bought a seven inch, same display that would just plug into the sounder that was under the dash. And that was small and hard to see and just wasn't really super quality. And that one got rained on and crapped out and was the display wasn't worth anything. And I think I bought another one and did the same thing again. And then I just said, hell with it. I got rid of all of it underneath the dash, the display up on the dash, and I bought a Garmin unit. No external antenna, built-in antenna, works fine, reads right through my top now. Well, here it is, 15, 16 years later, or whatever, and the radio is still on the boat. It worked fine, but the speakers just kept crapping out constantly. So anytime I was to use the radio, since the handset had a speaker in it and a mic, I could hold it up like this and hear on the radio. But the speaker never worked. And the radio, you see
see the size of this one? The radio was like this big. That big. I bought a spare and I kept using the handsets would crap out, the speakers would crap out, but the under the dashboard unit or under the, you know, under the console unit stayed working. Well, guess what? I just took it all off the boat. I had the spare unit and I had a box this big and I just sold it for 150 bucks in five minutes on eBay. 150 bucks for the whole box, two mics, one speaker, two units, two radio units. I just wanted to get rid of it. 150 bucks plus 25 shipping. I posted it on eBay and no sooner went and checked my email and it said, sold. And I was like, what? I sold it that quick because just the radio parts I saw going for like 140. So I just gave all that away practically just to get rid of it. And it paid for this. That's how you do things, folks. You use one thing to pay for another. You don't just pile this crap up in your, in your garage. So let's see what we got here. Because the moral of the story is separate the units and go simple. I look at these boats that I see at boat shows or on YouTube and they got screens this big and it has this and it does that and it's plugged into this and it and it's touch screen touch screen and every oh man have fun replacing that or when it shits the bed pulling that out of your your dash and going fishing with a giant 25 inch hole in your in your dashboard of your boat or your console keep it all simple that's what i do I mean, and everything works out for the better when it's, everything's kept simple. I always say, I always think it's just so funny when I see these new boats, somebody who's never really had a jazzy boat before, and I think about the salesman, all the crap that that salesman just sold that customer. Um, I mean, I've seen towers with radar and screens this big in the dash on a Carolina skiff, a flat bottom type Carolina skiff. You know, the bargey looking ones, they're fancy today, but the salesman is selling them all this crap. Oh man, I, I guess I could be a good boat salesman. I could turn them on to all that horse shit. So, this is a tiny little standard horizon radio. And I'm going to get up in the boat and I'm going to show you what my project is because I'm doing something that is going to take possibly a little fabrication. Alright, here we are on the console of the Jetty Wolf and here is my Garmin sounder, my Dewall. I love this size, it doesn't take up a bunch of room. When I was telling you about the 12 inch one I had, that was a Raymarine when I had my boat built, it literally was like this big and it really obstructed a lot, you know, but this is a uh, Garmin Echo Map SV. I don't know much else about it. This machine right here has really made me a Garmin kind of guy. I was going to even buy a Garmin radio. But since I don't use the radio a lot, you know, I wanted like a $150 VHF radio. I didn't want nothing fancy. And even this one that I just got came with glue. Digital Selective Calling. Uh, I had that on my my old radio. I mean, if you can see right here, 
There's the speaker that's left, and behind this is a three inch hole. So I just gutted the speaker and used the speaker box and everything until I could figure out what I want to do with this three inch hole. Over here, it had a small hole where you plugged in your receiver, you know, your microphone, your and handset, basically. You plug that in here. I put a little aluminum plate over it. And since the handset on the Ray 240 was like this big, uh, there was a, a big holder right here. So there was a holder here. And what I'd have to do, since the speaker over here was never working, I'd have to listen to the handset. And that is taking your hands away from what you're doing here. So, I've got my sounder plotter GPS out of the bracket. It normally sat right here, just like this. Now, what I'm wanting to do, I'm not really sure, and you'll be following along in my process here, because I, I actually love fabricating stuff. I love the metal shop, but then, did I ever take it anywhere to learn anything? I'm barely learning how to weld, right? Aluminum, that is. But what I want to do, somehow, some way, is take this radio, I'm gonna sit the mic up in here, and I wanna mount it, if you can see this, under the VH or the sounder, and it'll bring the sounder sounder up higher. That was my thoughts. Because as you can see, I don't have a ton of dash space. I'll give you a little, I'll give you a closer look. See, I don't have a ton of dash space. Okay, very simple console. I got a tray up here and I keep a bunch of stuff in the tray. And then you're not really supposed to take like your VHF and mount it close to your compass. So, and these here are my fishing line spool holders inside some cup holders because I got these cup holders if you can see there there's a hole right there and I dropped them in there here's more of them the boat only came with one and I made two so I keep four spools of different monofilament right there in front of me all the time <laughs> and then I just put in this tray and it holds all my stuff and then gives a little tiny jumping spider here. I can't stand those things, they're everywhere. Gives them a place to hide. And I got my RoboCup cup holders, I got my, my uh, ceramic braid cutter, there's my multi-gauge for the Suzuki, throttle, key, start-stop switch, Lenco trim tabs, and then here's my fuse slash panel, whatever. And then I put on another drink holder. Oh, it just fell off. But you know, another another Robo cup holder sits here. So I don't know where or what I'm gonna do with this radio. And then under here is my batteries and my charger and then I have this tray here battery switch is over there right over there and this is just where I keep tackle that I'm going to be grabbing constantly six rod holders handrail all aluminum windshield <coughs> glass uh, 
here's the chase pipe right here for bringing stuff up there's the chase and then the lights the nav lights poke out over here chase pipe going up and then running uh, to my light and then my VHF antenna is on that plate over there uh, this actually had aluminum pipes at one time that went up just like this on an arc well you get enough movement of your top that they broke and then it break they cracked right here so I just got rid of that one and I made a rubber one here this is just rubber and it moves because yeah no matter how you have your top built as you can see I mean look at the pipe that's the same pipe they use for a Marlin tower okay for my top all right and then I got you know double back here so uh, everything stays pretty dry but I have no place that I know of that I want to put this radio. Oh, and by the way, I'm using this mounting the radio as a rainy day project. It's pouring. All right, I'm getting closer to the end. I'm really wondering if this is going to work. I'll show you without going too close to my welds, okay? I did some aluminum welding with my spool gun. And this is what I made. And do you have a clue of what this might be? It's going to be a rack. I'm going to put VHF on the bottom, on top of the console. And I'm putting my Garmin Sounder Plotter uh, GPS on the top. So, that's the ultimate plan. Let's see if it works or not. I pre-drilled all the holes. It's not perfectly straight. I mean, I'm cutting aluminum with a... Sawzaw or my little Makita, which didn't have enough power to really zip through them. And I used my little drill press to pre drill all the holes. And I even tapped the holes that are going to hold down the VHF radio. I tapped holes into this. This is a MacGyverism. Alrighty, radio works. Water temperature, low to mid 80s. Weather, partly sunny. A chance of thunderstorms. High temperature, around 90. Max heat index, up to 102. 102? South winds around 15 miles per hour. Tides, Freeport Cable Station. Alright, well, the next part of this is going to happen now. Everything works. So, I'm going to get to the important part for the whole reason I did this in the first place. Alrighty, I'm tired. Here's the method to the madness, folks. I'll show it again tomorrow in the daylight. It's dark. I'm out here with lights, but I'll finish this up tomorrow and show you again. It's the next morning, day two. Well, not a full day. I mean, yesterday was just a couple hours of figuring all this out. And if you remember, I said I'm trying to always use, and this should be a rule. This should be a rule. I don't know if everybody knows this. Always try to use existing holes. I hate drilling new holes. I absolutely hate it. And I don't drill... I hate drilling holes in my boat, but <laughs> I ended up having to drill some new holes. Here in the dash, if you can see.
see. All right, there's my bracketry. And these holes right here. I got all different holes on the dash here. All from the different sounders that I had. Uh, seven inch, 12 inch, Raymarine, now Garmin. And I had to re-drill new holes. I could not use the existing holes for my bracket here. But pretty much it is not going anywhere. As you can see, I got the VHF antenna here. I've got up in here the plug for the radio. And the only bit that I really have to do now is tidy up underneath the console where the where all the uh, wiring is. So I'm almost done. My vision is complete, almost. I'll give you another shot of it here when everything is completely together. And today it's a beautiful day. I got like taking kids tomorrow from England. I didn't know we were letting people in from other countries. But a woman said she's got a five and a ten year old and they're from London. I don't know what they're doing here in Bizarro World, Florida. But I guess we're on the map. The rain is over, the land is dry. Why do you wear your pants so high? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No more rain. Nice and sunny again. Back to being Florida, sweating to the oldies. How about it, New Vision Security? Breaker, breaker, one nine. You see any smokies ahead? Come on, New Vision. How about it? <laughs> Everything is completely done. Buttoned up underneath the console with the wiring. Uh, this, it may not seem like a big deal to you, but getting this radio here and getting rid of that other crap, all I got to do now is figure out what I'm going to do with a three inch speaker hole there. I could utilize that for something, not electronics, but something else, I'm sure. I mean, this speaker box is just sitting there. I mean, it's not doing nothing. Um, but there's my radio. Got, the, got everything where my hands can be on the wheel and just go down here and touch the buttons. Same thing with this. My hands can be on the wheel here like this, and I can just, boop, 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 you know, touch the buttons as I'm running. So it's actually better because now it's higher uh, but it's a little project that took I don't know I probably got five hours in this this is my first big time welding project here big time welding project I guess I got to get rid of that mark I put four inch right there so Welding aluminum. I mean, all I did was spot weld it, sort of, just tack it. It didn't need anything else. Um, making this rack here um, to put everything on. So, that's it. You know, not a lot else going on, really. It's the doldrums of summer in Jacksonville. Not much going on inshore. Uh, the last time I was offshore, we had one little cobia, one little kingfish. Water was dirty where I went, the second spot, and we ended up catching three black tip sharks at it behind a shrimp boat. That's how I salvaged the day. 
I mean, it was fun. Had good guys with me. So I know my doing, you know, shark fishing gets absolutely no views. Nobody gives two hoots. What they really care about is seeing if they can spy on your on your trout spots. That's what people really want to know. <laughs> you know, so I just figured I'd do a video about this. And uh, since I haven't done anything in a while. So there you go. On a rainy day, I started this. And I mean, it's, it's pretty sturdy. I'm sure when I hit a wave, it'll vibrate here a little bit. But we'll see when I get out there. I'll see you on the next one. All right, you know what the nicest thing about this entire job was? Is everything came from here. I did the entire job with what I had and never had to make three runs to Home Depot. That is a monumental thing because you know how it works. Every single homeowner job or whatever you're usually doing takes at least three runs to Home Depot. Ha, ha, ha.